Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. We have a fascinating subject to share, and I'm not quite sure how we're going to get on with it, but we'll try. I want to talk to you about the responsibility of Christian children. Now, my discovery in America is something I didn't find in England. Too many of us read the books about how to bring children up and how children should behave, and not enough of us read the Word of God. In this generation, how should a Christian child treat their parents? Well, first of all, notice, this is the only commandment with promise. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The key word here is honor. We are to honor our parents. What does that mean? Well, obviously, we love them. We respect them. But there are times in our lives when the relationship changes. It changes when we marry. Uh, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5. Listen to this. And write it on your heart. And Jesus said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they too will become one flesh. When a couple marry, the relationship with mum and dad changes, and it must. Therefore, mum and dad, your relationship with your children must change. And if it doesn't, you're out of line with the Lord. Two things are laid down. We're to honour our parents, and we're to leave our parents when we marry. We leave them physically, we should leave them mentally, and not stay attached to them. That's one of the sad things we see in marriages today. There's another time I see when the relationship changes, and that's when our children go off to university or college. When they come home, friend, they're in a different relationship from when they went away. And if you try to treat them the way you did before they went, the probability is you've got a rebellion on your hand. And friend, I'm sorry, you deserve it. They are to honor you, but you've just allowed them to be independent for a semester. You try to bring them back under the control that was there before. The probability is you've got problems. Now, the last thing, both children and parents in the relationship must be balanced if they're walking with Jesus. Remember, when you look at Jesus Christ, there is tremendous balance in his life. Every time you discover this, in every way, when you and I move out of balance, we moved away from Jesus. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the obedience of children to parents. And we find this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on your earth. Obedience to parents is right in Jesus Christ. That's what it says. What is obedience in this particular context? What does it mean? Well, certainly to begin with, we do what our parents say. Just think there's one little change that's happened in our generation. I think we have to be reasonable as parents, and I think we have to give answers to our children as to why we expect them to do what we've asked them to do. And I find that reasonable. I didn't a few years ago. If I said it, you did it, and if not, look out. Why? Well, oh, I never worked it out. But if you're a parent and friend, you're not disciplining your child, you're out of line with God. And some of you may not be disciplining. Oh yes, I'm a Christian. But I don't discipline my children then, friend. You've got a problem. Obedience in this context obviously means we have to do what our parents say. We have to keep in line. Now, sometimes we get in a problem here. They're asking us to do something that God isn't asking us to do. Then we have to discuss it. The Lord still has to come first. What age does this sort of thing apply? Well, I think while they're at home and we're paying the bills, they have every right to be obedient to us. Now, how far you carry that obedience varies from family to family and even child to child. That's not favoritism. All our children are different. And if you treat each one the same way, you're going to come unstuck. They're not the same sort of person. And they have to be treated in different ways. Remember, just have ground rules in the family. What we've seen in one or two homes some older children are allowed all sorts of license. The next thing, the younger ones are taking the license too. You've got to have ground rules that will help all the family. 
and it's not going to be easy. The other thing is, some of our young people go off and get married, the marriage splits and they come home again. And they're coming home in a different context. You have to remind them if you come home, there are certain things you're going to have to do for the sake of the younger members of the family. If you don't, you're into rebellion. It does affect the younger members. Now, I want to come back on discipline. It just so happens that I found my ideas on discipline often vary from the ideas of many American parents. It may be because I'm European, I don't know. But I find some American parents are terribly soft. I have a feeling we see the result of that in our generation. Now, first of all, we should be reasonable with our children. Listen to verse 4 of Ephesians chapter 6. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Don't exasperate your children. Yes, sometimes we do. Why? Because we're unreasonable. We have to think of this. We have to handle this. And Dad, it's to us. Isn't that interesting? The Bible doesn't say a word to Mum at that point. You and I have been given that privilege, that responsibility to discipline the children. Now, we can't do it all. If Mother's at home and something goes wrong, she's got to handle it. That's absolutely right. Wait till your father comes in. Friend, you've got a problem. Deal with it then. There may be something more for Dad to deal with later. He may have to have a little discussion with the son or the daughter. But it's the responsibility of Father that there's discipline in the home. God has put us in that position. And friend, I think some fathers have got to answer to the Lord because of lack of discipline in the home. If we love them, we must discipline them. Now let's turn to Proverbs. Proverbs is full of information for parents. And what do we do? We read this good book and that good book and we miss the Bible. Listen. He who spares the rod hates his son. He who loves him is careful to discipline him. Wow. Can I read that to you again? Oh, Richard, that's old-fashioned. Interesting, isn't it? It works too. It says, Proverbs 13, 24, He who spares the rod hates his son. He who loves him is careful to discipline him. Some parents are so sloppy, they don't love their kids. If they love them, they're disciplined them. You go into some homes, and young children are still running around late at night. Friend, they should be in bed. They don't want to go to bed. Which child ever did want to go to bed? You're there to discipline them. Do you take them to the dentist? Oh, yes. Why? It's good for them. Friend, it's good for them to sleep. And it's good for you when they do sleep. And if they go to bed at the right time, mum and dad have some time alone together, which they so desperately need. I see in young couples a stress and a strain because they're never alone together. Why? Because their children are up to all hours of the night when they should be sleeping. Dad, you have to discipline. What about that rod? Yes, I think there's a place for corporal punishment, but just never do it in temper. Do it in love, but do it with firmness. Let's move on. We've got something else exciting here. Remember, if you love them, you discipline them. Corporal punishment is biblical. Proverbs 29, verse 15, I read this. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to itself disgraces his mother. Wow. Verse 17. Discipline your son and he will give you peace. He will bring delight to your soul. You see why some of our children have gone this way and that way and they don't know what to do? Friend, we haven't disciplined. Let's go on. Proverbs 23, verse 13. I read this. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with a rod, he will not die. Punish him with a rod and save his soul from death. What do you want? Do you want a child who's totally undisciplined? You see, the point is, as we discipline a child when they're young, so later on they can discipline themselves. And that's exactly the problem we've seen. These young people are growing up, they've never been disciplined. So they can't discipline themselves. No self-discipline? Look out. You see what happens. I worked in one of our volunteer fire companies. What did I see? Some of our young people couldn't discipline themselves. 
That was a danger in fire. It really was. We needed people disciplined. That's where the army, that's where the navy, that's where the services come into their own. They give discipline because mum and dad didn't. That is not biblical, friend. If you've got children, you've got to discipline them. If you don't discipline them, you're out of step with the Bible. You're out of step with the Lord your God. Well, you say, Richard, what about using a rod? Well, what do you use? I find the hand hurts. I don't see why I should get hurt when it's he who should get hurt. You see, we need sometimes just to stop that child in their track. And if it's done properly, if it's done fairly, and remember that word justice, the child has a great sense of justice. And if they know they're wrong, they're waiting for you to put them right. And friend, they're disappointed in mum and dad when they don't put them right. They really are. They expect discipline. They deserve discipline. And we need to give it. Train a child in all the ways that you should, including the Lord. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not turn from it, or he will not depart from it. Have we trained our children up? Do we train our children to read the Word of God? Do we train our children to pray? You have little people, you start training them. You say, they're not interested. Friends, start. Or will they get up from the table? Discipline them. Sit them down. Do you let them get out of the dentist chair? Then you should be ashamed of yourself. You, as father and mother, should discipline. I was in a restaurant one day and saw a three-year-old climbing over mother's head. I had a real problem with that. I always thought that children sat in seats in restaurants until such time as the parents allowed them to get up. I'm always amazed at a wedding when children are there and suddenly they're running all over the place. I thought children should sit or they get tired sitting. Let them get tired, friend. They'll sleep the better for it. There is a time for discipline and you can do it with love and you can do it with beauty, but they know who are in control whether it's them or whether it's mum or dad and the Bible is saying so clearly parents you're in charge and God put you there make sure you are or you're out of line with the Lord your God you have a problem